Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I have the last installment of my comfy, cozy loungewear series. Okay, so if you've been watching me lately, I have been making a bunch of loungewear and as we are heading into spring and things are starting to open up here in Spain, it is less about lounging around the house and more about getting out. So I do foresee that I will be shifting my focus to beautiful spring summer makes as we go forward, but I still of course love to just have things that I can put on to run to Pilates or go for a walk or just hang around the house. So here's what I made. All right, so let me get through showing you these garments and then I will show you pictures and show them on me as we go. And as well, I have some photos of a dress that my daughter Audrey made this week that I think you'll really enjoy. Okay, so I made a pair of Hudson pants. And of course, we all love the Hudson pants pattern. If you haven't made them, they're quite the classic. Um, one thing I did is I did their high-waisted hack that they have on their website. They show you how to draft it. It's, it's simple, but it's, I mean, no, I wouldn't say it's simple, actually. It's not difficult, but it's not simple. You do have to kind of follow some steps. It is worth doing though, for sure, because it kind of updates the pattern to what's a little bit more current. Um, so as you can see here, I ended up with quite a bit added to the top of mine. Um, I also added some to the crotch curve where I find that my crotch curve is too low in general. So I'm trying to just do that now as a, as a rule and it seemed to be working. And I also added some length because last time I made them, I found them about an inch too short. So that's just an example. You have to adjust the front, the, uh, the front leg, the back leg, the pocket, both pocket pieces and the little pocket lining. So this is made from French Terry from Pugu Textile. I did show you guys this a little while ago. I'll try to link to that video. Um, and I actually reached out to them to ask them if they are shipping outside of Spain. And they said, we're working on it. So if you saw something that you really liked, right now all this is 10% off too, you could probably reach out to them and, and see. Um, this is super soft. So let me put this over here. <laughs> Cast it aside. Um, so this is French terry in that it has the terry loops on the back that you can see here. However, um, it doesn't feel like sweatshirting, which is kind of what I associate the words French terry with. I think of it as a sweatshirting. This has more of a sweater knit feel. It's much softer, much drapier. Um, yeah, like it's very, very soft and it feels amazing on. Now I had two colors of this and so I thought I have to, like I just have to do some color blocking because that would be, you know, taking wasting an opportunity. So I did the bottom cuffs in white and I did the little the little pocket lining in white. I could have also have done the waistband, but I just thought waistband, waistbands are something that you're always like touching and manipulating and I figured it would get dirty really quickly, so I decided not to bother. Okay, so I'm gonna give you pictures at the end, so just be a little patient. Um, but yeah, these turned out great. And then the other thing I made is from this issue of Bird It Easy. So this is January, 2020, or the first issue, 2020. It comes out, I think, six times a year. And I'm so glad I collect these little ones. I don't get every single one, but I would say I get most of them. They're just great little patterns when you don't really wanna think about things. And to be honest, I actually cut these patterns um, because they're not nested. The pattern pieces are not nested. I'll show you here. Like the pattern pieces aren't nested on top of each other. And because of that, you're, you're able to cut them out. Now you do need to add seam allowances, but you can cut them out. And also I, I tend to be either the smallest, the smallest size or the second smallest size. And so I don't really need to keep the larger sizes. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm only going to adjust a little bit on either side if I do. So I feel safe kind of cutting these out. It's the only ones that I do everything else I trace. Okay. Uh, and these, these instructions are in Spanish. Again, I just, I'm going to show you guys in a future episode. I promise exactly how I translate things. Don't get stressed out about translating things. If you, maybe if you're a beginner, beginner sewist and you're really nervous about things, okay, like maybe don't start with a foreign language pattern. But if you know a little bit about sewing, especially something like this, that's like simple. And actually, what am I saying? This magazine, not th uh, this magazine is now available in English and all the patterns are available online in English. So I will list it for you below. Um, but my, my copy obviously is Spanish. Okay, so where is my, where's my pattern? <laughs> okay, so here's the pattern. 
And if you don't know Berta Easy, they take one base pattern and they they style it three ways, or they they give you three hacks, and then of course you can go from there. This is actually even using more of a jersey than a sweater knit, um, but certainly works. And essentially, it's just a bat wing top, but it has you can see in the lawn drying. It has sort of an upper portion and a lower portion. And when you cut out the sleeves, it's literally one portion that goes all, like one pattern piece that goes all the way across from cuff to cuff that includes the neckline. And the reason why I like that is obviously it's simple, but also it makes for a simpler neckline. You're not doing a neck band, which is, you know, I mean, I do them, but they're certainly not my favorite thing to do. So if I can avoid it, so much the better. So I cut this one and I did it in the same thing, but did the color blocking. Now, where did I put it? All right, so here is the top. This is how it turned out. You can see that the color blocking kind of extends under the arm. Now I did make this sort of three quarter length. I probably took, what's that, three inches, three and a half inches off the edge because you're supposed to cut it the long way on the fabric, but I didn't want to use as much fabric. And so I cut it on the the width of the fabric and so obviously I couldn't get enough and I was going to add cuffs I actually did add a cuff initially and then I didn't like it so I left this on this was super quick I, I love this transition I put the white at the top to add brightness to my face the only thing I added to this that wasn't in the pattern is I added twill tape to the back there's twill tape there this is the first time I've done that uh, I think it's the first time I've done that to add some stability to the back neckline because it did feel like it was already stretching and I didn't have interfacing on it. So I was nervous about that. I did use the twin needle here. I also used the twin needle uh, on the cuffs and on the hem. So I used it all three. Um, so I used some of your tips that you guys have talked about. I lengthened the stitch length, which someone mentioned, and I loosened the tension a little bit. Um, what I didn't do was add interfacing to the hems before I did it. And so you definitely have some tunneling. I don't know if you can tell there. I don't know if you can see the texture. There's definitely some tunneling. I don't, I don't really care. Um, now, one of my favorite fabric shops online, Cal Joan, does have uh, jersey interfacing now. And that's the first time I've seen that here. So I'm going to order some of that soon. Anyway. Okay, so now I can show you the pictures. Um, here's what it looks like. Yeah, I really comfortable. I, I wanted to not wear these because I wanted to be able to show them to you up close, but this top looks great with jeans. I tuck it in. It looks great. feels great. So I think I'm going to get a ton of use out of that. The jogging pants, I wore to Pilates today. It was great. I wore them the whole class and I could definitely see sleeping in them or lounging in them. They're just going to be really, really comfy pants. And I do have a little more of this fabric, so I'm probably going to make maybe like a corresponding, I don't know if you guys have heard of the Pua tank. It's a free pattern. I'll put in a picture. I've downloaded that and I've put it together. And so I'm thinking I might maybe make a little matching sleeveless tank for when things get warmer, which they are doing. Yay. Okay, and then I promised to give you guys uh, a little picture of what Audrey's been doing. So Audrey, earlier in the week, just decided spur of the moment that she wanted to sew a dress. She has sewed in the past. When she was probably eight and nine, she all of a sudden got on a sewing kick. She asked Santa for a children's size dress form. That was a challenge for Santa. Um, but we, but he, you know, the, he set the elves onto task and got the children's size dress for him. <laughs> and she had her own little three quarter size blue, uh, sewing machine and a full sewing machine. And her first thing she made, she did a, a knit top to wear for the first day of school. So she was into it for probably two or three, like eight, nine, 10. And then she was off it for a while. And she still liked when I made her things, but she wasn't really interested in doing stuff herself. And then she saw this fiber mood. Is that what it was? No, she, she saw a dress that she liked on Pinterest. And I was like, mm, I think I have a, it just, you know, it was a wrap dress with a ruffle. I'm like, those are a dime a dozen right now. There's tons of patterns like that out there. And I found one on Fiber Mood for free that I had already downloaded called the Charlotte. And I'll show it to you now. And we got the fabric at our local fabric shop um, in this beautiful kind of rust color. It's a polyester. Um, it was not inexpensive, it was, it, but it wasn't like crazy either. I think it was 12 euros a meter. 
and we got a meter and a half and she just got it out of a meter and a half. But, you know, as opposed to buying it at Mango or whatever, and it kept her occupied during her... Well, she made the whole thing in one day. They're on school break right now for Easter. She made the whole thing in one day, which I thought was pretty impressive. And, uh, and she wore it uh, out with her friends. So I'll put in pictures. She just looks so adorable. I was so proud of her. I had to sit on my hands to not <laughs> take over. And I gave a little bit of sage advice here and, it, here and there. And I did show her how to sew a dart. So I sewed one of the darts. But other than that, she did it all herself. And since then, she's actually made another dress as well. If you head over to my Instagram, which I'll put below, um, you can see the other dress that she made as well. All right, you guys, that's all for me today. Um, I have some spring sewing coming up. I have some bathing suit stuff coming up. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do. There's lots of lovely sewing coming your way. Okay, I hope that wherever you are, the sun is shining and you are sewing, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.